It's hard to work with cattle, particularly over time, and, and not form a bond. The depth of their character and their society is, is quite hard to explain without sounding whimsical, but their characters are in their own right. They have their own social groups, they have their own little disputes, they, they sulk, they mourn. They never cease to surprise me, even after 25 years. Oh, I love my cattle, I really do. I find it hard to imagine what life without cattle would be like. That wouldn't have been the case at 25, but at this point in my life, I wonder what I'd be if I wasn't farming. There's farming roots on both sides of the family. We're on my wife's family farm uh, here at Twitchin. My children are the fifth generation to be born here. So we're talking kind of 150, knocking on 180 years of history. Day-to-day -day life back then, everything would have been done by hand. So it would have been hand size, mowing meadows, forks, forking in bedding and feed for, for animals in the winter. Anything moved around like milk would have been in buckets. They probably were almost entirely self-sufficient with the produce from the farm that they lived on and sold surplus for, for, for income. These guys would have worked hard. It would be long days, low wages. Life would have waxed and waned for these guys on the money they received and the lives they led. Because of the drive to dig for victory and the whole dynamic around increasing food production, my father's and my father-in-law's generation were pushed hard to become more efficient and produce more. The intensive farming methods produced oversupply, which is the point at which I came in in the 80s. I was determined not to be a farmer from what I'd seen of farming, long hours, hard work, financial hardship. I guess the culture that I took on was one of produce hard, push things, get bigger, um, get more efficient. I describe myself now as, a, as, a, as an ethical and sustainable farmer, but I, I think I arrived here based on farming outcomes, which needed to be less inputs, less work, and to try and make a living from the land that, that we have here and the situation we have. Get bigger, get different, or get out was a term coined by Don Curry in his report after foot and mouth nearly 20 years ago. That metric for running a ruler over farming businesses is still very valid today in the light of the threat to UK agriculture from Brexit. Farmers as a breed are some of the most resilient in any walk of life. Agriculture will survive, but it, it is very much a case of uh, what form that takes. The worry that I have is that those that buy our goods, they've just followed normal economic practice and look for the cheapest commodity. And if they want commodity produced cheaply to lesser standards, those are available from other countries. In certain countries, hormones are permitted in beef feedlots. Antibiotic is fed in feed. Carcasses are washed in chlorine. There are feedlots in the States that can be seen from space. It's got to have an effect on, on cattle welfare. It's my sincere hope that we're not fully exposed to the economic pressure of world markets and commoditization of UK farming. I've thought long and hard about whether to, uh, to, to get out at the point where the referendum went against staying in, but uh, I don't think I'm a man stubborn enough to uh, die in trace or die in harness, as my father-in-law would have put it. As long as I can stagger out to a Land Rover and go and see my stock and uh, I'm not a nuisance to either my family or the community in general, I'll, I'll keep farming and then uh, yeah, at, at that point I'll, I'll hang up my spurs. <laughs>